Would you please remain standing for our scripture reading? Our reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, some familiar words. A shoot shall come forth from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge of the Lord and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes sees or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall eat with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, please join me in a spirit of prayer. Our gracious sovereign and our God, assist me to proclaim, to spread to all the world abroad the honors and glories of thy name. Amen. Between the turkey and the football games, And the other things that make Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, maybe a fewer family and a little bit more apart, did anybody else notice the rain, right? I was watching the rain the other day and thinking about it in light of this text as it kind of came down there in the backyard and I saw it just kind of over and over. I got thinking about water and all the water in the world. You know, water is such a precious thing in so many places on the earth, something so desperately needed for life. And what we know is that if you can get a little soil together and a little bit of water and some sunshine and a seed, something almost always grows. Water in the Bible is often a common metaphor for the wisdom and knowledge of God And here, Isaiah, speaking to people that he believed had forgotten the scriptures and left behind the text, paints an image, a a vision, a, a sight unseen by many of them to say that somehow the righteousness of God from scripture will so overflow the people of God that it will be like drops of water in the oceans of the world covering the face of the earth in water. That somehow the wisdom of God made known in the hearts of believers will make a new creation in every heart, so much so that it will overflow the world with God's love. 
Did you look closely at the rain? Do you believe that such things can happen? Isaiah lived at a time where the Holy Land, where he lived, had been divided into a northern and southern kingdom. The world around him was being made laid waste in a desolation. A process was beginning when the people of God would become a conquered people. And for 750 years from the time of the Assyrians, all the way through to the Romans, they didn't even get to have their own voice in international affairs always being a proxy kingdom during that time. Could you imagine how this must have sounded? 750 years. Okay, so how long has the pandemic been going, y'all? Right? Not even 750 days yet. Can we wait and be safe and take precautions in these difficult times? It's hard to stay focused that long. Uh, How old is the United States? 750 years? Not yet. 750 years, can we even wrap our minds around the timelessness of this hope? And yet here he still holds on to a promise that if he is 750 years from the Messiah, it was a promise made to David 750 years almost before him. It was an ancient promise already in Scripture at the time of Isaiah. I mean, it's got to be old if it's already in the Bible at the time of Isaiah. Friends, he's holding on to a promise made to King David that is so important, it's in the Bible twice. Did you know that in your Old Testament, there is a chapter that they repeated twice, verbatim? I hope you don't believe me, and we'll look it up. But it's in 2 Samuel 7 and 1 Chronicles 17. Those two chapters are verbatim repeated, where David tells God that now that he's settled in the land and has Jerusalem established, he will build a home for God. And God, going to Nathan, sends a prophet to interrupt David and take him back off his high horse and say, who are you to establish me a house? I will take you and in your descendants, I will establish a household where my love and grace and reign will be through them forever, forever, not 200 years not 300 days, not 750 years, but forever. And now with the Syrians invading from the south, the north already split off, the world around them seemingly being made into a desolation, the first 11 chapters of Isaiah tell us that it will be as if Every tree in the forest has been cut down and laid waste. Have you looked at a forest? Been to East Texas, anybody? How about the mirror woods and beautiful trees up there, right? Big. All of them will be chopped down, he says. And then out of a stump, the stump of Jesse right? All the kings at the time were running around saying that they were of the house of David because of that promise. And he said, well, really the one coming is from David's father. The hoped for one 
promised in 2 Samuel 7 and in 1 Chronicle 17, God says, they will be like a son to me. I will be their God and they will be my son. And the people will follow me and righteousness will so flood their hearts. You see, Isaiah is quoting a scripture already well known, and from that, sharing the strength of a hope of a vision that isn't yet fulfilled. And in fact, the more time goes on, the further away, the further back it seems the less possible living into it would appear. Has anybody ever had to deal with the stump? I mentioned a forest, you know, big live trees. When I was a boy, uh, I got to spend some time with my parents, and it was good to see them. But when I was a boy, one of the things I really appreciate they did for me was when we moved into a new house in Sugar Land, they had me help in the yard when I was in junior high. Now, as a junior high boy, how do you think I felt about it, right? Pretty junior high boyish. I mean, I wasn't a bad one, but I wasn't a good one either, right? I was somewhere in between. And uh, I was a little reluctant. But there was a willow tree we planted in our front yard by the garage. And when I say we planted it, I really mean my dad planted it, and I got to help. But because I got to help and was included, I always thought I did it all, right? I know I put a shovel in the hole. Oh, yeah, it was kind of already dug out before I got there, but I did something. At least I watered it, right? I mean, I did something to help. Oh, and that tree started to grow. It got so thick around that, friends, it got like about the width, like my arm is now, you know? Good size, willow, taken off in this little, you know, it's all mud down here. It grows well, you know, and there's Did I mention water and seed? And yeah, it just kind of goes. And right there, this willow tree's kind of growing. And apparently, that width, about arm's width, one of the cats in the neighborhood thought it would make a perfect scratching post. Right? Has anybody seen that happen in this? I mean, nothing against cats. You know, I just, you know, this one I didn't like particularly at that time. But it scratched the bark all around the tree. And over time, the tree died. Now, it didn't look dead at first. Leaves stayed green for a while, but eventually their nutrients got cut off. Over time, the the leaves and the branches that are usually so flowing and able to move and so beautiful when the wind comes through the willow became hard and rigid and stiff. There was nothing left to do but cut the root down and then figure out how to get the the stump out and the root out. So I cut the tree down and sawed it off with the de-saw. I'm pretty sure my dad helped with that as well. And we got all that chopped up and put, and then he said, well, let's take some time and figure out what's going to happen to the roots and the stump. Can you see it? Have you ever seen a stump? It looks dead and like nothing can happen. But friends, if the roots are in the nutrients of the soil and it gets water, roots can produce new shoots. And there was a shoot that came off one side of the tree. And my dad said, Brad, Let's hold on a little bit and hold off a little bit. And a few other shoots tried to grow, and as they did, we had about five going up, and my dad said, Brad, pick one. Which one looks the healthiest and most viable? And so I trimmed back the others, and when you went back about 10 years later, there was this beautiful, beautiful willow tree that now was wider than my leg is round, I could probably have both of them in that trunk. 
And the only thing that was unusual about it is how it kind of jogged to the right before it went up there at the base. But it gave life and shade and shelter to birds and animals. Do you have the kind of vision that God gave Isaiah? Dare we believe it's even possible? Isaiah reminds the people in those first 11 chapters of how they need to continue to help the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. How as the people of God, they have been set apart to care for those that others would exclude and leave out. He reminds them of things in the Ten Commandments and in the Torah about righteousness. And he talks about righteousness and faithfulness in between these beautiful visions of hope that can endure. Those visions are this kind of idea of righteousness. And and what does righteousness mean? It just simply means having your heart so flooded with God's love that you can't help but help other people around you. It's being so overjoyed by what God is up to that others seem unable to see or understand that you can't help but ask, Lord, I know this is messed up. I I know this world isn't right. I know there are things going on, but help me be a part of your will for the world. For I believe in your promise your vision that indeed, like the water filling up the oceans, that your love and righteousness might yet fill our hearts and overflow so much that all who are thirsty might yet drink. And faithfulness, ah, friends, faithfulness is easy. It's just knowing you can never be righteous on your own. That you're going to need God's help to lift you up when you fall. To give you courage when you're depressed. To give you strength when you think you can't go on. So that you might outlast even 750 years of waiting holding on to the promise that God has made. Because friends, I want to give you a vision today of something that blows me away even more than the rain, more numerous than the drops of water that fell on my backyard are people of God just like you who even in the midst of a pandemic make decisions on behalf of Jesus out of righteousness and faithfulness so that this world might be a better place. I'm thinking about the doctors who still go to work even when they're not being properly compensated or protected and yet every day are there to make sure that we are safe. I think about the teacher I had a conversation in who's not only battling the hunger of her students that she is facing every day, but risking her own life to keep teaching in person, even in the midst of all this mess. I think of the many more people that God and Isaiah would care about, that Pastor Brad pleads with you to care about, who have no decision about work, but have to show up in horrific conditions, not being protected every day to make sure that people who can order stuff and have it delivered keep being able to have what they have and be safe. My friends, I thank God that indeed there are Christians like you on the front line 
making sure that the love of God is shared with the world. Peace may seem as much of a dream or distant hope as a forest of trees and a stump growing, as water in the ocean. But I want you to know that the promises of God for peace in our world begin with the decisions we make every day and how we live our lives and love those around us. Carry on, my friends, in hope that the peace of God is being made known even to us. For when we do, I see it. I see that little green coming up off the edge of the stump. There's life there. One day a tree can grow that will indeed give shelter from the wind, strength in the storm, and peace to those furry friends. Amen.